am going to introduce you now to Theodros Fikra, who is the co-founder, editor, and independent observer at Guion Journal. Um, he is going to talk with me for the next hour, preferably listening rather than me chatting because I am the worst chat box in the world. I hope that you will stay with us through the night because I'm going to be here till three in the morning and we've got some fantastic guests lined up, including Jack Posobiec, I always pronounce his name, Posobiec, there we go, name pronunciation trauma. Anyway, please let me hand this over to Theodros. You're on. Hello. Thank you for having me, Vivian. I'm a chatterbox too, so hopefully I try to tame it down a little bit on my side. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I was on with Joe uh, Laurie about, I think it was about a month ago. And uh, so I know today is potentially this weekend is a pivotal uh, moment in this whole uh, development. It's after seven years of effectively being locked up against his will and, and as, Oftentimes, what seems to be a uh, solitary confinement, uh, all of these things might be coming to a head. So uh, I'm here to, uh, to do my part uh, as a fellow journalist and really as a fellow human being to, to speak up and to stand up on, beyond, on behalf of uh, Julian Assange and, and all our truth tellers who uh, defy uh, the, 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 the rulers who rule through force and, and and try to compel humanity through uh, injustice. So that's why Actually, I'm here. Well, brilliant. And that's why you should be here. Um, right. The, the really interesting question I have in terms of it being interesting to me is how many journalists do you actually have anything to do with that work for you know, mainstream media? Do you have any friends that work in like, uh, you know, sort of- Like mainstream, mainstream or independent? Yeah, media? mainstream, mainstream. In other words, uh, people that, huh. yeah. No, no, not really. Uh, I mean, I know some, but to, to say that they're my friends, not zero. All right. But then based on any conversations you've had about WikiLeaks or Julian Assange, do they in private support him and worry about the future of journalism? Uh, I can make an educated guess. I, I've talked to a lot of journalists in the past, not necessarily specifically about Julian Assange, but in private, they, they will say, for example, that they're, they're, they're poor, the, the practices of corporate journalism, uh, that they entered into, uh, you know, into the field of journalism to you know, speak up against injustice, to uh, expose malfeasance. And uh, as what happens a lot of times when, when people become part and parcel of corporatism or, co or joint corporations, their voices and their passions get subsumed by uh, following orders. So to that end, I think it's just, you know, you, you connect the dots and I think there are some, I'm not saying all, I think people that are getting paid too much money uh, have been completely, they're rationalized and they say, well, of course we have, of course he's doing X, Y, and Z and they believe it. But I think uh, within the rank and file, I think there's a lot of people that, uh, that do not uh, concur and, uh, and maybe they bite their tongue, but in, in private, they, uh, they don't like what's going on with Julian Assange. Well, in the unlikely event that any mainstream media are currently watching right now, because I think our existence is offensive to them, but let's pretend. Um, what would you say, what would you want them to understand about their position of responsibility? Because clearly, you know, you talk about a corporate world, but the really critical thing here, it, it would be like, actually, it's exactly like uh, medical people, doctors and nurses, who right. fear for their job or fear for consequences so that they don't take right actions when things are being done incorrectly in a hospital. You know, we're talking about human responsibility. So if you were gonna to speak to the journalists of this planet and to the editors of all right. the major like prostitutes out there, why don't you give them a piece of your mind? I'd like yeah. to hear it. So, you know, to be honest with you, so it's funny that you said that because I, I usually don't hold any uh, anything back when I uh, roundly criticize uh, folks within the corporate media. But you kind of remind the, the way that you you stated that question. Uh, so I've been thinking about what does this mean, and how can we get folks to understand what Julian Assange's treatment means to to the rest of us, to 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 not only the people that care and and that that are speaking up and using whatever voice and means that we have, but 
to the broader public that really has been disconnected. Um, and it, that includes, I think, a lot of folks who are in corporate uh, journalism. So there's something I said, I wrote an article earlier, uh, just published it a few minutes ago, right before I really? came on here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's called- can, uh, can, you, can you tweet the link out or is that too distracting? I, I, I just did actually, uh, a few seconds oh. ago. It's oh, uh, the article is called uh, Protect Julian. How long will they kill our prophets while we stand aside and look? Uh, that's and so, a brilliant, brilliant title, by the way. So that's that's a song from Bob Marley, uh, Bob Marley's song from uh, Redemption Song. And I've always, always, always loved that specific quote. How long would they kill our prophet if, while we stand aside and look? And so uh, what that's what we've done uh, throughout ages. I know it's going to sound controversial for me to call uh, Julian Assange a prophet. But for me, a prophetic voice is not just somebody within the Bible. It's anyone that speaks up against injustice. Uh, that's what a prophet is. So the, to, the, there's humanity in a way. It's split between the prophets who yearn for and fight for justice and the profiteers who they're fighting against. The profiteers who have no, uh, take no exception in terms of uh, spilling blood, uh, purveying injustice in order to, to maximize their profit. Um, so profit versus profit or profit versus profiteer. So in that way, uh, Julian Assange is a prophet to me because he's uh, speaking against uh, the, the Pharisees or the profiteers within uh, the corp this corporate uh, agenda uh, where uh, there's some folks uh, that are working for the globalist oligarchy, uh, the deep state, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, I don't know where compliance ends and where active evil begins, but I know that there's active evil in this world. I think most of us comply. Um, the vast majority of humanity, because we don't either we don't know any better or because we're afraid to speak up, we comply. Then there's a fraction of humanity that revel in uh, you know, spreading uh, bloodshed around the world. And uh, so these things, uh, maybe there's a spiritual component to these things. Uh, but for too long, we have been silent, humanity. We have been compliant. And we, we've stood aside and, and, and looked while people that chose to take on the mantle of being a prophet have been persecuted. So you look at this biblically speaking, for example, I'm not trying to preach over here, but uh, the, the person that has been renamed to Jesus, whose name was Yeshua, uh, spoke up against injustice. Uh, no matter what religion has done to uh, co-opt his narrative, to merchandise him, uh, they, they, I believe <laughs> the story makes sense to me that, uh, that there's somebody that rose up to speak up against uh, the Pharisees or the profiteers. And he spoke against their hustle and they crucified him. This is nothing new in human history. This has happened over and over and over again. So you don't have to go down the lane of, of faith. Look at, uh, go down the realm of, of history. Uh, Patrice Lumumba, uh, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, John F. Kennedy, Robert Kennedy. Uh, the list goes on and on. Med Medgar Evers, uh, uh, every generation, there's either a known prophet or an unknown prophet who gets silenced for daring to speak truth against power. Um, and so the reason that this continues is A, because of the act of evil. There's people that don't want their hustle to be disturbed. But then really it's us, uh, the, 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 the very people that they're trying to speak up for decide to, to hold our tongues. You know, I used to say back in the day that Jesus fed a thousand three people were by his side while he bled. Um, so a thousand he fed, three while, washed him while he bled. And that's the same thing that happens all the time. Uh, Martin Luther King, right before he died, he was the very same people that he was standing up for. He was vilified by the very end. No matter what they tell you now about how he was, uh, you know, how he was beloved, uh, when he became quote unquote radical, uh, when he uh, stood up against uh, the Vietnam War, when he decided to seek inclusive justice, the very establishment that once embraced him vilified him. Uh, same thing with Ma uh, Malcolm X. When he went to, when he was going around saying white devil and, and being uh, divisive, he was embraced by the establishment and, and the quote unquote elites, which I don't even call them the elites, they're, they're debased. But the minute that he went to Mecca and came back a changed man and decided to stand up for inclusive justice, 
He was silenced, and the people that he stood up for were nowhere to be found. This is a, a there's a connective tissue to all these things. So fast forward to Julian Assange. That, you know, no matter what you think about him, he's exposing malfeasance, the very malfeasance that gave us the Iraq, uh, the Iraq war, the Syrian, uh, the, the war in Syria, that gave us the, uh, the, the economic crash of 2008 that took away and that stole the life savings of millions of Americans and billions throughout the world. So he's speaking against this. He's speaking against the hustle of hustlers. So for his uh, courage, he gets locked up in a, a, an embassy uh, under threat of duress and harassment, potentially getting the same treatment that Chelsea Manning got, if not worse. For what? Because he chose to become a journalist? Because he actually did something that is enshrined in the Constitution? Um, so it's up to us, the, the, the humanity, the public, that uh, that he's doing on this on behalf of to stand up, or are we going to just continue to stand inside and look, stand inside? And, how much longer are we going to stand inside? And what's done to truth tellers eventually bounces back and boomerangs against society. So we pay for that. Ultimately, we'll pay the cost of, of the blood will be on our hands, and whatever repercussions come will also be on our hands as well. Teodros, I love what you just said, and I I think that. The reason why I love so much your referencing Jesus is because I believe Jesus wanted us to raise our consciousness to his right. level and that everything you're describing is a combination of cowardice and a lack of responsibility. Right. And the fact that Jesus, you know, and I don't speak about this in terms of, you know, teaching the Bible either, because I am like so Bible illiterate. But the one thing I do know and love about Christian ideals and values is that they speak to a higher human consciousness. They're all right. about, you know, a deep respect for one another and showing love, brotherly love, and most important, being Christ-like, which is taking responsibility. Now, when we do these vigils, um, I'm sure that, you know, Elizabeth said this several times tonight. It's so important that everybody pulls their finger out and does whatever they want to do. I mean, that's the freedom of it, whatever right. they want to do, but that they do something with this in mind, that you talk about Julian being a prophet, a modern day prophet, in as much as he's speaking the truth. But by example, by example, he's showing all of us how we should behave how right. we should act. And so every journalist that comes on here, and in fact, whistleblowers, and they, they have this characteristic of, of deeply being filled with a deep concern for humanity. Right. And so I, I'd like to just know and allow people to share in your ind indignation how it can possibly be a persuasive argument that Julian is a rapist, a rapist and a misogynist and all these ridiculous things, right. except for one fact, we are so bombarded with psyops and propaganda. Right. And, re and now really, really, sorry, I know I'm babbling away here. Um, no, 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 no. But, but, but Christ wanted us to take that big step of being responsible like he was right. and so part of that propaganda is ineffectual if you take responsibility and start looking at information for yourself so as a journalist how much do you feel that journalism is failing and which is why you know we all look to Julian Assange as the you know I mean the bar none most ballsy brave journalist and publisher on planet earth right. um what what would you like to do to just encourage people to realize that they actually can play a part mm. so and, and save Julian? <laughs> right. Now, the, the, by the way, there's something that captured my attention when you just said uh, about these trumped up charges. Um, there's two ways that profits get silenced all the time. Uh, and it's either through uh, scandals or through bullets. Um, and again, this... They either defame them or they bury them. Um, so that's something else I actually noted in the article as well. But uh, you know, you look at the the president 
uh, that we have right now. I'm not trying to go too much into the political angle. Uh, he's had, I mean, he, he explicitly said, grab them by, you know, which is an act of, of rape or an act of, mm -hmm. of harassment at the very least when you grab somebody, when you mm -hmm. grab a woman, you know. Um, so th that's that. You have a prior president, Bill Clinton, that was, has been accused plenty of times of, of rape. Nothing happens to him. Um, and you see Joe Biden. <laughs> I mean, th oh there's, my God. <laughs> I mean, there's people that try to defend that. Uh, he, I don't, it's sickening. I, I don't even know how, this is by the way, how bankrupt corporate media is. They, they've known this for a very long time. This type of sick behavior uh, where he's, basically, he's making little girls uncomfortable. Uh, there's no defending this. Nobody, in fact, there was po politicians were afraid to take their own kids or their own daughters in front of him. Uh, there was one video, I forgot which politician it was, where he was like, he basically said, that's enough, Joe. <laughs> I guess this is what power does. It makes mm -hmm. you ignore and, and, and potentially even offer up your own child as a sacrificial lamb just to get close to power. So, can, I, um, can I interrupt you? Can I interrupt you for a second? Sure, sure, sure. Um, this business about power allowing all kinds of outrageous behavior, trust me, having grown up in show business, right. I am well aware of how, again, you know, I want to go back to this idea of, of Christ like Christ -like consciousness. Right. They see something disgusting, but they're so. Right. Um, over, overwhelmed by the fame of the person or right. they, they don't know what to do with themselves because they're, they're too intimidated. And so really, you know, we're talking about a grand raising of human consciousness. Right. If we want yeah. the amount of human beings that are needed to make this world a different place. And, and really, I mean, maybe I'm apportioning too much responsibility to journalists, but you guys are actually the kind of modern scribes of philosophy and ethics, you know, and uh, I think that actually, I, I, I'm sorry, I am just criminal. I should shut up and let you talk. No, but you no, no, <laughs> I'm, no, I'm no, stealing no, no, no. your time. No, no, but you're not actually you're not. Let's call it a conversation. That's exactly what we're supposed to have. So, uh, okay. I, you know, I don't want this to be a monologue, anyways. I, I do enough okay. of that when I do my own broadcast. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, so I I just think that you know journalism has taken on a role, which is so vital and so right. important. Perhaps especially because there seems to be such a drop in moral guidance, which used to come from religious teachings. You know, yeah. most people just go, "Oh, I don't believe in God." Uh, yeah. Shit, so I'm not going to like read anything. And then all they have that's going to form their behavior is this horrific reality TV, yeah. which I believe yeah, is, is- Intentional, what? it's intentional. I mean, I think these things are intentional that uh, everything, here's what I, what I believe. I think everything mm -hmm. that was good gets co-opted by evil. Um, and so, you know, including the, the teachings of Christ, including uh, faith, which is supposed to be in work. I, I don't make it a point to talk too much about my, my faith because it should, should be in work. Uh, it's not up to me to try to save anybody else. I'm, I have a hell of a time trying to save myself and, and wash away my own sins. So right. who am I to tell somebody else? Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, there, there's a, a part of it is ego. A part of it is the need for our, for us to be gods to other people. We try to tell other people what to do, and then on a broader level, this is exactly what power does. Uh, people uh, taste from the uh, chalice of of ego and 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 hubris. And they want, they never want it. It's never enough. Nothing is ever enough. And so in a way, when we look up to these demonic, twisted <laughs> uh, people at the very top who have no conscience about themselves, uh, it's, it's because we want to be like them. You know, there, there's a, a weird ideation that we have that we too could be famous. We do. We too could be powerful. And then the people that get relegated to the sidelines because they chose to speak against the power. We, uh, we dismiss them. And so if there is gonna be a shift of consciousness, it's this, uh, we've gotten away from uh, service. Uh, it's supposed to be about servants. Even the story of, his, by the way, his name was Yeshua, right? But I mean, I'm not trying to turn mm -hmm. this biblical, <laughs> a biblical session over here, but no, but if you really read his story, he was a radical, 
and not progressive. He was a radical. He fought against for progress. Like the, mm -hmm. the word progressive has been co-opted by it's right. not ideology. And I, I hate ideologies. But mm -hmm. he was for progress and he was for humanity. Uh, so I'm not gonna call him a progressive. He was just, let's just say he was a, a, a progressive thinker, but not necessarily a progressive. But um, he, he uh, stood against uh, ushery, which is uh, lending money at, at interest. Mm -hmm. The whole world is tied up in ushery now, you know, and then he was against- Sorry, are you, are you saying usury? I'm sorry. Sorry. Usury. Yeah. Usury. 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 I get usury for? usury. You're right. Uh, but the House right. of Usher. You were in the <laughs> no, no. Alan Poe's okay. mind. See? Yeah. It's good to have somebody correcting me. <laughs> no, but usury. Like the, the yeah. whole idea of, of, of charging money, uh, mm. interest to, to lend uh, to the to people that are, have none of it, it's a, it's a mortal sin. <laughs> and mm. meanwhile, now they have, they killed him and, re, and, and implemented. Uh, usury throughout the whole world. Uh, you know, it's a trading money for uh, blessings. Spoke against mm -hmm. that. Look what churches do now. Um, so the powerful have a way of, of co-opting the, 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 the message of, of any prophet throughout history. Uh, and so that's, that's what's happened now. And we pay, ultimately we pay the price because there's a reason why usury is, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's wrong because you're, you're enslaving humanity uh, un, under the thumb of people that control currency. And you look at the whole world, globalism is based upon fractional reserves. There's no sovereignty. America doesn't have sovereignty. Great Britain doesn't have sovereignty. France doesn't have sovereignty. And we're, we're all DBAs uh, doing business as of corporate uh, corporatism. And beyond that, a uh, very few globalists who have, and let me clarify one. When I say globalist, but some it's it's very uh, popular for uh, for these people that rule through uh, force to use the pains of the oppressed uh, as as a human shield. So I, when I say globalism or globalists, I'm not talking about Jewish people or you know it's not anti-Semitism. There's just because there are some Jews that happen to be globalists does not mean everyone is a globalist is a Jew. Anymore, there are globalists that uh, that are Jewish. There are globalists that are uh, Catholic. There are globalists that are uh, atheists. There are globalists that are black. There are globalists that are white. This is a, a, a small club that has a diversity of malicious people in it. Uh, well, actually, can I can I just say is that you sure. describe it as a club? I would just describe it as a group of beings at a similar degraded level of yes. consciousness. Yes, but they're not limited by any ethnic or you know or any skin color they're, there's they're pretty diverse there, there might be a, a preponderance of of a certain uh folks in it but they, they've learned a long time ago to ex accept people that are w willing to sell sell their soul sorry uh, the, the, the 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 thing that i'm really trying to underline because this is part of my mission is for sure. people to for people to acknowledge that you know we're talking to consciousness we're not right. talking to colors of skin right. or what's hanging what's hanging between your legs right. or anything we're talking to consciousness whenever we talk to each other and this terrifying um attempt uh, well not attempt a very successful program to right. make us experience ourselves as you know black person white person rich person poor you know gay straight um th what this does is it actually it, i think it's almost a quality of degraded consciousness is this failure to differentiate um uh, and instead to fraction you know sorry uh, uh fracture um a, a wholeness that exists and you know tonight the people that are watching and who will watch and continue to watch this whole situation with julian i believe that regardless of our political viewpoints you know, I know a lot of people, uh, you know, have their beliefs of political systems. Uh, really, if we just talk to one another, we would probably refine and hone down what that political system should be. Right. But what we what we should focus on and what our shared goals are like, you know, I, I don't like socialism. It scares me. I don't like communism. It scares me, too. 
um, right. you know, uh, and I have all kinds of viewpoints. But what I share with you and everyone who's taking part in this is the desire for man to be liberated mm -hmm. and to be free, to be his individual self and to have access to every possible advantage in the world. And that could be so much more accessible if we didn't have this chokehold of, right. let's face it, psychopaths um, holding down humanity through mm. their methods they currently use, which is right. social engineering. So yeah. that's also, God, there's, your shoulders are getting weighted down with all the things that I'm giving you to do. But you also, <laughs> you, have to, you have to counteract social engineering. You have to... Right. Give, give people the playbook. And I think part of that is to, so one of the taglines that we have <laughs> mm -hmm. is uh, we'll never get to truth uh, because, on, you know, there's too many lies in the world. But at least you could take a step towards truth. And the first step to truth is to know when you're being lied to. Uh, on that, to that end, uh, these uh, labels that have been imposed upon in humanity, whether these labels are ideological based or identity driven uh, are nothing but a caste system that were invented out of thin cloth in order to ghettoize humanity. Uh, so I, let's start off at a very basic level. It turns black and white. I have mm -hmm. never in my life met a, a quote unquote, a truly white person, doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. I've never met a person that was black, doesn't exist. These were uh, artificial constructs invented by slave traders and racists. Uh, they were invented in order to shatter humanity into tribes. Um, and, and so, yeah, there are some effect, you know, there, there are some differences, obviously. There's differences between genders, for example. There's differences between um, communities. And so I'm Ethiopian, for example, and I, Vivian, you are telling me that, you know, you have a British accent, but I'm not sure exactly where you were born at, but, you know, we have well, different I... things. But, <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no, sorry. I, you got to be. I told you at the beginning. You got to be careful with me. I'm just like interrupt and talk my head off. So no, please, don't carry on. No, but I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to drink my tea. Don't worry. <laughs> no, but you know, hum, I'm not. You know, when I say uh, disavow our differences, I'm not uh, preaching conformity uh, or uniformity. We're different. We have our differences, but our differences pale into comparison with our similarities. So I like to think of it like human beings as a family. Uh, we all have different first names. My siblings and I all have different first names and we all have different traits, but we're bounded and, and bonded by our last name, which is Figure. In that same way, humanity, whether you're from Japan, Peru, uh, you know, England, America, Nigeria, we all have different names, different first names, but our last name is human. And so what they've, social, this social engineering that you uh, talked about is uh, the, the over generations, they've gotten us to accept these blatant lies of labelism brands, they're human brands. As in mm -hmm. when they brand cattle, it's a way to differentiate one from the other. So the labels, black and white, Democrat, Republican. Um, and now they, they, there's a, a new label and a brand being manufactured every year. It's gotten to the point now where some people literally say five or six adjective be adjectives before they say who they are. So I had somebody say, excellent, <laughs> like she said, five, she rattled off five things. And I was like, well, that's great, but can you tell me your name? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this is, this is what we've gotten and, and this is nothing People think they're quote unquote woke when they're doing this and they're not, they're falling for the hoodwink. And the hoodwink being, as long as I could get you to believe that your plight is different than somebody else, I could be your demagogue. And as long as I get you to be uh, to believe that I'm your demagogue, well, you're not demagogue, I could be your savior. I'm a demagogue who's pretending to be a savior, a politician. And as long as I get you to believe that, then you could be my base. And a base is somebody that you beneath, that's you beneath somebody. Pace is what the politicians call their most loyal supporters. And, and so they've turned human, humanity into a base and they've built pyramids on top of these bases. <laughs> they're, they're, they call themselves the capstones for a reason. That's the top of the pyramid. The rest of us are the base that's bearing the brunt of, uh, of these, 
these depraved human beings. I don't even know if they're, they're human beings. Uh, you know, I call themselves human for a reason. The minute that you decide to kill somebody, you're beneath human. The minute that you decide to take money from people uh, to the point where you, you, you drive them to poverty so you can admit yourself, you're beneath being human. And we, we as human beings have offered ourselves as sacrificial lambs to, to these people. And we pray before them and we, we idolize them. Uh, you know, politicians, pundits, there's no change that will ever come from a millionaire, from a millionaire politician, a millionaire pundit, a millionaire social activist, all of them under the dole of billionaires. You're looking the wrong way. That's you, you head towards that direction. You're offering yourself as a sacrificial lamb. Uh, and people that, that pray before the altars of idols eventually become sacrificial lamb. The only way is to turn the other way, to, 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 to stand next to prophets, modern day prophets like Julian Assange. Yo, there should be 10,000 people in front of the British embassy right now refusing mm -hmm. that anything bad happen to them. There should be a million people, to be honest with you. And we should also be doing the same thing wherever we're at. Uh, enough is enough because if it's done to them, we open up the, the, the way because what we do, our minds, uh, we, we, when things get normalized, we accept. So if we normalize the, 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 the persecution uh, of, of truth tellers, we open up that path for that to be done to us. So who's going to get fired next to their job for daring to speak truth to power? Who's going to who's going to uh, feel the heat of of, of being you know uh, ostracized because they said something that was not politically correct? This is what's coming for us, and it could be even worse. So you know it's in our interest. If you're not going to do it for the sake of humanity, for the sake of of looking out for somebody that's that's powerless as he's being ramrodded by the powerful, then do it for their most basic need, self-interest. Because as it's done to them, it will be done to you. I think that's incredibly important. That's where the responsibility comes in, even if it's just in, as self-interest. But I think certainly from what I've listened on these vigils over the last God knows how many months, um, there's tremendous humanity expressed throughout these vigils. And I know that the people that tweet and, you know, really care about what's happening in Unity J and they forward articles and they make comments and they, you know, retweet and love, like and all that stuff. Right. These people are humanitarians. They're out there. I right. think that what you, if I could sort of put that in a nutshell, what you're yeah. talking about is the difference between what's called the great versus the good. Right. You know, and I think that there's a lot more good people on this planet. It's just that they've been persuaded, of course, through education, through the societal bullshit that goes on, that they're somehow less because they're not Kim Kardashian with $50 million, you know, ring on. And all of this training to somehow not see the value of yourself and your own intellect and your own contribution, that's been whittled away yeah. through, you know, God knows how many other things. But I think that, you know, for myself, I became sort of obsessed about Julian because of his humanity. I, I, you know, reading how much he invested of his time and his heart and his soul into exposing to humanity the ways in which they were being not only used and abused, but, you know, killed in horrific, nightmarish wars, which... Let's face it, if journalism was doing its job, how right. would these wars happen? Because nobody wants a war. I don't know, except for sort of, you know, extreme uh, warriors. I don't know of any person that goes, gee, I cannot wait till the next war. I'm just dying to have my house bombed to well, shit. My, son, my children die. <laughs> oh, really? You think they're if, you, if you own enough stuff, yo, I'm telling you, this after 9 11 happened, uh, yeah. people that had enough, they, they were short selling. Uh, TWA and what all the airline companies, you know, where there's profit to be made, people turn, uh, they become callous and they uh, mm -hmm. they see dollars instead of seeing human beings. So if, if you have enough shares in Boeing, if you have enough shares in uh, North of Grumman, if you have enough shares in 
uh, you know, all the, the, the various uh, defense contractors, trust me, there's people that are popping champagnes every time there's a, a bomb that's dropped overseas. So there are cool. some. Well, look, I would say if anyone's seen, um, oh, it's an amazing miniseries. And of course, uh, the night, what was it? The night, um, is it the night? No, the night porter is a different film. I met the night manager. Have you seen mm -hmm. that? No, no, you, I oh, oh my God, you have got mm. to watch this. It's such an incredible portrayal of arms dealers. I've never mm. seen a better job done of it. So for anybody that wants to sit down and compulsively watch uh, five parts of a miniseries, check out The Night mm. Manager. It's really, me, really brilliant. Let me add to that too. There's another one called yeah. With the Nicholas Cage, uh, Weapon of Master of War, something like that. But it, well, it just it, look it, up Nicholas Cage and you'd get yeah Nicholas Cage yeah. and war. I think yeah. it was like Master of War. Anyways, he detailed he was an arms dealer and the opening credit of how a bullet is manufactured and then it starts off in a factory and then it ends mm -hmm. up in somebody's forehead. It is mm -hmm. I'm a I'm a big cinematographer. I love imagery. I love the symbol of of words and pictures, especially when they're mm -hmm. being combined. That opening credit of that movie is probably the most powerful thing I've ever seen in terms of a movie ever. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's so, it, it's a crystallizing moment in terms of how one bullet uh, enriches so many people until it kills <laughs> its ultimate victim. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, that, that's ultimately the problem. And it goes back, it ties back even on a biblical level. That's why uh, I, I, should, I always say Ashery. <laughs> You, usury, oh, usury. Oh, you, you taught me a new lesson. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's bad, though, because it makes us uh, forget when you when when your interest is, is to multiply money instead of uh, multiplying good, then uh, everything else becomes objective, or you know you objectify human suffering. You know you rationalize it away. Uh, a million people suffer in Iraq and they die. Or you say, well, we did it for the defense of freedom. That's a lie. We did it to enhance the profits of, of the defense contractors and the military financial complex. So, you know, I, I was telling somebody earlier that the reason, actually, I just had this conversation a couple of hours ago. Um, mm -hmm. She was asking me, why is it that people can't give up when they have enough money? And I was like, well, let me give you an example. I went to, for my 40th birthday, that was four years ago, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I went to Atlantic City. Uh, and I sat down at the table with $100. Uh, and then somehow I doubled it. Should have walked out. And I said, <laughs> oh, hold on, I just made $100. No lie, within a course of a three hours, I went on such a winning streak and I came up with a strategy where I would just double, double, double every, every time I hit a, a winning streak and then I would just go back to just paying $10 until mm -hmm. next time, right? And I think it just happened to be my day that day. It went up to 1000 Mm -hmm. I should have walked away then. Ultimately, I was at 4,000, from 100 to 4,000, right? Blimey. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's, I don't know. What percentage is that? Is that 400? I don't no? know. I'm, I'm, I don't I'm know rubbish the percentage at that. <laughs> I don't know. 400 Guess, I don't know. No, yeah. I have no idea. I'm like terrible. So actually, I think, it was, anyways, whatever it is, it's a lot of money. Uh, right. like, like Obama said, I made me some serious tummies that day. But then mm -hmm. I didn't walk away. And here's what happened. Within the next two hours, I lost all 4,000, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I look back at it now. In that moment, I was telling myself, come on, I can make 4,000. I can make 10,000. I guarantee mm -hmm. if I make 10,000, I would to, to try to get 100,000. So in, in, in a way, this is what money does to you. It averts your soul. So Jeff Bezos has $140 million. He will never, in his life, in five lifetimes, he will never be able to spend that much money. He could buy 25 private islands. He would still have money left over. But yeah, he wants more. For the same reason I wanted more when I sat down at that casino table. The money has, is very intoxicating and, and you don't know what to give up. So um, depending on people that have that much money to, to lead us is, is the height of foolishness. Uh, the change will only come from us, the people that are struggling. If it doesn't come from us, then uh, it will never ever come if you're sitting at the casino table and you win 20 hands in a row and then the people uh, next to you, there's 10 of them and they hit, they, they keep crapping out all the time. Would you ask for a new dealer? 
or would you ask for a new deal? Heck no, I wouldn't. Would you, Vivian? <laughs> no. Actually, to be honest, to be honest with you, my currency is how I feel, uh, right. like how I feel about myself. And so if I thought I was like a triple double shithead, I would count that as being um, <laughs> desperately poor, poor in spirit. So right. for me, being being rich in spirit is oh, the yeah. currency I'm that I deal in. But, you know, I, I understand that what you're describing is temptation. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think that really, you know, what Julian has done and maybe people haven't quite grasped this yet is he's shown us how we should all be that right. we should have courage to not only look at the truth but to defend it and you know in many ways i think you know as much as people denigrate trump and his followers the one thing that i have seen is that they desperately want america to be as it was and go back to the values right because that's what this is about all of these you know descriptions you've given of being tempted by money and you know billion zillionaires uh, they have their souls their consciousness are corrupted hmm. and i think that what, what people need to realize is that martin luther king was completely right that you know we mustn't use violence uh, to change things and all we need to do, I mean, for instance, if everybody like turned off their electricity for, you know, a month and went right. around with candles, right? Which is, think of the enormous oh, yeah. loss of income, right? So it's really just that focusing people's consciousness towards thinking of life in terms of a currency of right. goodness and, yeah. and, 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 and that to know that you've, sold yourself right sold your own soul down the river hmm. um hmm. i think if i may just completely dominate your last five minutes <laughs> 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 sorry i i want susie i said you know you gotta be careful because i'm gonna end up <laughs> anyway um but i just think that people need to invest in their souls right. and investing in your own consciousness means sometimes you're gonna have to bite down on the legacy of human uh, unconsciousness, you know, mm. that, that is a, a vast legacy out there. Uh, people haven't developed themselves. They haven't developed their own courage and they certainly haven't developed a feeling that they could make a difference. Mm. So anyway, I'm going to shut up. I could go on. But so by the way, I just, I, I just Googled, not Googled you, but I just like looked yeah. up you. I did not know you were, so you're Vivian Kubrick V? <laughs> I am wow. V, Vivian wow. Kubrick. Here, we um, have like name, name pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> actually, 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 it was no. Kublik. It was right. Kublik. But my grandfather, who when they, um, you know, wanted to Americanize themselves, he turned it to a very inelegant Kubrick. But it oh. was Kublik, which is this communist uh, in the Ukraine, because wow. my father's yeah. family are from Russia. So you know how many of your of your dad's movies I've seen in my life? <laughs> I, I have a feeling you're gonna say zero if you didn't recognize my name. <laughs> no, but I have the uh, so I didn't even put two and two together. I was so caught up into into the into what we were doing. I was like, and then I said, let me follow her. And then it hit me, I said, wow, full metal <laughs> one of my favorite movies. Anyways, I wanted to, I went to college, by the way, to, to become a film producer. And, oh my uh, goodness. Oh my a long goodness. Time ago. A long time. So yeah, so and then I just I realized you had to start off from the bottom and I have no patience because I wanted to be at the very top immediately. Actually, <laughs> can I tell you can I tell you something very annoying? Sure. You certainly <laughs> don't have to start at the bottom. You just have to have be crazy enough to just try and make a film. Mm. I mean, it was something my father drummed into me like nonstop. He just said, learn all the things that you're supposed to do to make a film. Just do it yourself. Don't go to okay. school. Don't go right. to anything. Just watch movies and just learn how to do it and um you know I mean, you know he was a kid from the bronx so he was right. a bit like a bit spunky you know right. but listen no, 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 no. It, it you i i am taking up the last six minutes that you have so you <laughs> right. i would like to say what would be your message to julian to encourage him and reward him for this unbelievable sacrifice that he's making sure. for all of us so you know i think uh 
I know ultimately um, the people that suffer the greatest are the ones that contribute the greatest to uh, humanity. Uh, that might not necessarily sound so good for the times that they're suffering, uh, but maybe this one time, and I'm hoping and I pray that, uh, that we'll take a step back and uh, we'll actually stop uh, persecuting the people that speak truth. Uh, maybe the people that are so drunk on power will actually see the way, but most likely not. But maybe if they won't see the way, the people that uh, prop up the status quo will say, I've had enough. Uh, and that, by the way, for me, that's why I, put, I, I bank on one thing because the, the, the other uh, option is horrific. So there's two ways change will come. One is when the people that pop up the status quo say, okay, enough, enough of this, enough of giving our hands and supporting uh, evil, active evil. And so the people that comply, and they're, they're you know, for me, when I criticize, for example, uh, the, the people that sit at the policy table, I'm not criticizing the rank and file. So uh, there's cops that, that I have defended over my life. Uh, I don't blame all cops for the stuff that happens. There's a lot of veterans and, and active duty military that I'm friends with. I do not vilify them and blame them. There's a difference between people that sit at the policy and purvey injustice and the, the rest of humanity, including the ones that actively comply and the rest that passively comply. We're all in this together. So what I'm hoping is the ones that actively comply are the ones that hold up institutions that they say enough. And when that happens, then maybe a sea change will happen. And when that happens, Julian Assange will be looked upon as he is already, by the way, as a, a hero to humanity because he did, he, when other people, other quote unquote journalists chose uh, fame and uh, success, he chose honor and dignity. Uh, and that no amount of money, he's the richest person in the world because of this. Uh, yes. And the people that Maddow and Sean Hattie are getting paid $10, $20 million are poor, poor in spirit. I'd rather be rich in the soul uh, than uh, to be wealthy in, in a bank account because the, the, the latter you can never fill. You can never feel that. I don't care how much millions and billions of dollars you have, you will always be thirsty and hungry. People that are doing good and that act out of love and compassion and that stand up for the least amongst us, they are wealthy and they, that they will be rewarded in this lifetime, not in the next future lifetime because they can go to sleep at night knowing that they did the right thing. And there's not, I've gone through periods of depression in my life. There's nothing worse than not being able to sleep at nighttime, nothing. There is no torture that is mm -hmm. tantamount or equal to sleep, sleep deprivation. And uh, the people that have billions, I honestly don't believe they, they're able to sleep at night. Uh, somebody I said earlier, I've never, there's not too many poor people that commit suicide. There's a lot of wealthy people that commit suicide. Uh, and I'm not saying that to, uh, to, cat, to, to, to revel in that. Uh, I don't wish that on anybody, but uh, I just hope that uh, we take the next step. Because the other option is the French Revolution. There's only so much people could, there's only so much people that could take of being pushed around before they rise up. So it's in the interest. Again, uh, if we I said earlier that uh, self-interest for, for us, the, the the marginalized majority to act if nothing else because of self-interest, the people that, that refer to themselves as the masters of the universe, they quote, they actually call themselves this, by the way, masters of the universe. <laughs> and the capstones of society. Yo, look into your hearts. There's not enough money. There's not enough, uh, uh, you know, bunkers in the world that will ever protect you if people get pissed off and there's a mob mentality that forms. And that's what happened in the French Revolution. And that's what, what could happen again if, if another 2008 happens and things fall apart. And, and so the people that are protecting you are the very people that are with us. So don't be stupid enough to think that you will be protected, you won't. So before that day arrives, treat us with fairness so that you will not be treated to gu uh, guillotines. So that's pretty much my end, uh, what I want to wrap well, up. <laughs> well, thank you so, so much for coming on tonight, especially talking to me with my, my terrible chatterbox tendencies. Um, um, but it was, it was <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, it was 
was so brilliant of you to come on and I'm sure everyone really valued so much what you had to say. And I just want to say as a final you know, word to you, I don't think these people are aware of what they're doing because I think there's a mechanism. If you do something really bad and you can live with it, it's because you've turned off your right. ability to actually look at reality. And I think, uh, certainly from my own experience, many very, very crazy, famous people that I've met, they have absolutely no grasp of reality, no sense at all that they're being grotesque or rude or horrible or whatever. And I think that ultimately, somebody who has gotten to that position of power is probably their soul is as mangled as you could possibly imagine. And their awareness, their awareness is dropped home as nothing. But here's another mechanism. I think that when you do a lot of bad things, what you have to do is you have to lessen the, the, the people that you did it to. You have to say, yeah. oh, well, they're just idiots. They're just cows. They're just bovine mm -hmm. morons. Who gives right. a fuck about them? You know, right. and I think that there's a callousness that comes with that level of, you know, being in denial about what you've done. So, you know, you, you naturally will make less of everyone that you've hurt and which would consequently, uh, there was a great film about that. Uh, there mm. will be blood. Have mm. you ever seen that I've film? Seen that. I think I have. Yeah. I, I love the fact that you, know, you love all these movies, by the way, because you, you- Oh my God. That's what I do I, my whole life. Is <laughs> <laughs> you need to come to my place. I'm just like the worst <laughs> shut in. I just watch movies like, and TV all the time. I mean, I'm like a story monster. I like right, listening right, to right. stories. I don't, but um, anyway, listen. Thank you so much for being with me. I don't see uh, um, our next amazing speaker, which I hope you will stay to watch. Uh, um, oh, bloody hell. Hang on a sec. Jack Pesobak. I'm sure I'm pronouncing his name. I always pronounce names wrong. <laughs> Jack Pesobak. Pes how do you say it? Jack Pesobak, isn't it? Somebody? Anyone know how to pronounce? It is. I look, I love him. I've seen him on, I, I just... Uh, anyway he's not here yet so please feel free to keep chatting especially because i gobbled up some of your time yeah you you just giving me another spot another no uh, yeah, I, no no please <laughs> I, actually you know what i'd love you to talk about is no. why because people are like a bit anticlimaxed if i can say that word that way um they right. are looking at the live feed and there's like bugger all going on except for this terrifying thing that um cassandra uh tweeted out last night where um, a WikiLeaks fan turned up and these guys with like bloody massive machine guns. Did mm. you see that? No, I did, think did well, you... I saw a picture of it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, well, well you... anyway, but she actually filmed it. Um, but why, why should people uh, understand how dangerous this situation is? Because it's not about like, is anything, you know, is there like an actual hand-to-hand -hand combat fight outside the front of the embassy? Right. That live feed is there to, to intimidate, I reckon, and to capture if anything happens. But of course, you know, they could shuffle them out the uh, servant's entrance if there is such a thing. There usually oh, yeah. is in an old English house. But please tell people why it's so important that even if absolutely bugger all happens, just a cat sits at the front door, why is it important that we should be here in this emergency vigil talking about the value of Julian? Up to you to take that away. Well, because we bear witness. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, even if we, I forgot who said this, but I'm going to paraphrase. But even if we, we are powerless to act, we must still act. Um, you know, for, at the very least, uh, let let us register our, our voices in, in whatever capacity that we can. Um, and so we make a difference in that way uh, to completely. Uh, the only reason, by the way, that that power has a modicum of restraint is because they fear us. If they didn't, uh, then we, 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 we will be back in the Roman days where people, or even prior to that, or in the days of pharaohs, where people will be lined up and literally uh, be building pyramids to the, to the pharaohs. We've kind of progressed in life because they've seen, they understand that there's too many of us and there's not enough of them. And so uh, they give us a little bit of freedom, a taste of freedom. So uh, if we completely give our hands to this, though, if we just 
get cowed easily, we go right back into the days of the pharaohs and we go back to being lashed uh, uh, and carrying bricks on our back. And we're not, to be honest with you, uh, sometimes I, you know, I'm not trying to make light of, of the history of slavery by any means. But uh, when you look at, like, in terms of inflation, of where we're at before, and how much money people are making back then compared to how much money people are making now, how much people are at the very top are making compared to that, the, the, the gap has probably even grown even more between the bottom uh, 90% and the top 1%. Um, so in that way, like enslavement, whether you're enslaved, uh, to uh, uh, you know, to Ashley Chains, which is horrific. I think I'm not trying to diminish that, but enslaved to a job or enslaved to a paycheck, enslaved to inflation. Uh, how many of us stick to a job because we 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 fear the alternative? How many of us are truly free to do what what our our, our chosen uh, passions in life? How many of us are happy living uh, the life of of being in bondage to a debt? And so these things that, you know, we, we progress, but we've, we've also regressed in a lot of ways. Freedom is, is a chimera in this way. Uh, but if we want that to be completely wiped away and, and go back to the uh, days of the pharaohs, then we just keep being silent while these things are happening. And as mm -hmm. it's done, I mean, Martin Luther King said, injustice against one is injustice against all. So injustice against one who's actually trying to speak truth to power when uh, that becomes normalized, then we give our hands to that as well. That eventually comes for us. You know, um, Haile Selassie back in the 1930s, mm -hmm. when Ethiopia was invaded by Mussolini, uh, he went to the uh, League of Nations and he uh, pleaded with the world leaders. He didn't even ask him to fight on our behalf, on, on behalf of our, my forefathers. He just said, give us the means so we could, we could defend ourselves because we can't, he was basically, he was saying, we can't defend ourselves against tanks and, and, and airplanes and mustard gas with rifles. And so just give us the means to defend ourselves. And they said nothing. They ignored him. And he told them, what's happening in Ethiopia today will land at the, at the doorsteps of Europe. And mm -hmm. sure enough, sure enough, it did. And Europe burned to the ground. Uh, London burned to the ground. Uh, Italy burned to the ground. Germany burned to the ground. Paris burned every almost every major city burned to the ground in, in world war ii if only they confronted evil when it first happened and you know before hitler was uh mussolini um and so if they confronted either or both maybe the lives of i don't know how many tens of millions of europeans and 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 russians and, and asians and americans would have been saved so in that way if we do not stand up to what's going on. Uh, mm -hmm. Injustice that's taking place to Julian Assange and really to, to a lot of people throughout the world will come at our doorsteps. When that fire comes, who's gonna stand up for us when we were being quiet the whole time? We're gonna have nobody to blame for us except for ourselves. And that fire is gonna burn maliciously when that comes for us. It always burns more when it comes through, then when it when it's being done to Syrians and Iraqis and uh, and uh, Venezuelans and Palestinians, that fire is coming for us too. So you know, it's not again. We're not going to act because it's it's the right thing to do. Act because of self interest. Well, actually, I'd like to say everything that you've outlined there about how bad things happen because people aren't actually like pushing back against evil people, maybe, you know, because it doesn't directly affect them. Right. Um, the difference is, is that technology has given these monsters that run this planet, which I would say probably are whoever it is that really controls the banks because mm. nothing happens on this planet without money. Right. And um, I think that what's so insidious and what people really are, unaware of is the soft kill that's going on there is a war against us and and i've spoken about this before on the vigil that you know in every way julian is fighting to try and stop war because it kills so many people and it's so horrific but actually right. there's a much 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 bigger culling going on through you know devices that i won't 
dominate your time by saying all of them, but I'm probably you are aware of them. Um, but you know, the new 5G that's coming out, um, oh, yeah. Belgium, Belgium just said, you know, bugger off with your 5G, we're not having it. Uh, I actually watched a video, I don't know if anyone's looked at it, of 5G experiments where the birds literally fell out the trees and died. It was mm. the most upsetting thing I've ever seen. And um, I, I just think that people are amazingly naive. And like you said, their ability to confront evil, you know, actually I'm sort of connecting a couple of things. I saw this amazing video that I tweeted out of like a whole village picking up this big house and moving it, mm. just totally manpower. And I just, I just think people need to understand, you don't have to be Julian Assange. You just have to pick, be one of the people that picks up the big house and helps move it. You know, yeah. you don't have to sit there and write articles and, you know, because, you know, Julian has got chutzpah, Jesus, that guy has got like balls. You know, he just says things and, um, you know, that are not only truthful but are based on his expertise in understanding how technology is going to all put us in a big gunny sack and it's going to get pulled tight yeah. so we have to support julian not in the way that would be necessary if you don't you see if you don't support julian if you don't support wikileaks you may find yourself standing in a hellish bombed out fucking excuse me uh city no, yeah. you know <laughs> with a with a baseball bat you know and, a, and and like half a pork sausage in your pocket to live on you know mm. you don't want it to get to that point and the only way that you can really break through the technological you talked about burning we're burning from technology i've looked at the technology that they've got including those horrible vans that like drive down the street and can just x-ray into your house you know, and see who's there. Uh, in fact, actually, if anyone's interested, it's very, 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 very Christian, but that's the whole point. Let's not even worry about what our beliefs are. These people know what they're talking about. It's called Gen 6. Mm. I don't, have you heard of this, Gen 6? I've heard of, I've heard of uh, the, the five, but not six I haven't heard of. That, okay, Gen, I think it's gen6.com, and that's G-E-N-S-I-X, Gen 6. I'm sure it must be Genesis something. Uh, Joe Booth, I think it's like just... Oh, sorry. I got a little message here and I can't read it. Hang on a sec. Excuse yeah. me, everyone. You chat on, Teodros. <laughs> Go on. No, it's a, this. You gonna give me an open mic? Do you know what I can do with an open mic? <laughs> uh, you know, you better hurry up because I'll be coming. <laughs> like... No, by the way, uh, I'm actually uh, dedicating. There's a a part of the Gion Journal that that says Seek Truth TV, and usually that's where I, I broadcast you know, uh, my, my weekly shows, I'm actually going to dedicate uh, that section to uh, to the, uh, the the live stream. So I'm going to do a, a multi, I'm just going to basically have the uh, the YouTube uh, channel uh, embedded in there. So I'm going to have that up for the whole weekend. I know y'all y'all are doing it for the whole weekend. So yeah, I'm have that up in there as well. Thank you so much. Um, I, I, I wish that I had a way of seeing if anyone's making any comments. I, I didn't want to fiddle with the software because I couldn't even get it to work on my laptop. Um, there's something going on with Zoom. It's like gone mad. Anyway, mm -hmm. so I don't know if any of you uh, are able to make any comments. Let me just ask Joe. Joe, are you able to see if anyone's uh, writing comments? And if so, can you just put it in the chat line so that I can get um, Teodros to... Yeah, we'll do. Okay, thank you, darling. Um, do people call you Tio? Yeah, yeah T Tio is good. I could go with that. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know. People call me Viv, and I hate it. So. Right now, I don't mind. I've been called a lot worse things in life. So, <laughs> oh, well. actually, just while we're here talking about being called bad things, what do you think? No, no. What do you think is the most, you know, admirable qualities? Uh, because I could think of many, but admirable qualities of Julian Assange, because I, I certainly would like to let you say what you think. If you can try and I guess what I'm asking you is, why do you think he is? Um, what's the right way to put this? Well, first of all, we know he's as tough as shit. Right. Because I don't know about you, but I've tried to play this game with myself. I tried to imagine that in, you know, 2012 or whenever he went into that place, um, I, I 
I, I was trying to think back to 2012 and like go, right, where was I? Okay, imagine that I just stayed there ever since then. What would that feel like? Right. And we all take it for granted, the immense psychological, emotional trauma of literally being like in some kind of nightmare scenario where you can never leave a building. I mean, I know prisoners have that experience, but at least they've got their own, you know, they've got their own thing going on. It's actually, I don't know about that. That's probably the most stupid thing I've ever said, because if anyone's ever read Sean Atwood's, uh, have you read Sean Atwood's book, uh, three books? You've read, about... you read a lot of books. I thought I actually, read a lot I, of books. I... <laughs> no, no, no. I That's good though. I'm, I'm saying that like in, in, in reverence, not uh, not mocking. Uh, That's good. <laughs> anyway, Sean Atwood is, you know, has a real gift of writing, and I see Jack. I see Jack, but I am just going to finish on and say, Sean yeah. Atwood um, has written three books that, if you want to understand how, now there's a perfect example of somebody who is on the evil and dark side, mm -hmm. and he had a raising of consciousness brought to him by the impact of being in this horrific prison in um, mm. Arizona. Uh, but his other two books are about being in jail and about being in prison. And I think everyone should read it because that's another big bloody thing that needs to change in this country is the prison system. Yeah. Um, anyway, listen, it's been lovely talking to you, Tio. I'm going to call Likewise. you that. Like, no, okay. um, and uh, I hope that you'll continue to watch over the weekend. And if, if there's any spaces that open up, if you'd like to come back, then you're sure. most welcome. Mm -hmm.